Hi, welcome to my channel, Granny Annie Creates. Today we're going to learn how to wet block our crochet and to see if it's worth doing and it, whether uh, we can have lots of fun doing it. That truly is the flavour of the soap or the scent of the soap that I'm going to be using in my warm bowl of water so I can block this beautiful piece of crochet that I'm working on. So I've got a nice big bowl of warm water and I'm just going to add some soap to the water so it makes my garment nice and soft and also smell lovely. So then I'm just going to take my piece of crochet and immerse it into the water. Nice and gently because we don't want to irritate the fibres, especially if it's wool. This one's acrylic so it's not so um, delicate as wool. Even so, I want to be gentle with our crochet because we spent, spent a lot of time creating it. So show it some loving care and it will last forever. So yeah, once you garment nice and soaked gently wring out the excess water don't wring it out like a dishcloth just nice and gentle just keep moving your hands around and give it a gentle squeeze get most of the water out and then we're going to lay it flat on our towel. So to lay it flat, just try not to let one bit of the garment take the weight of it when it's wet. So just sort of move it around with you're holding several pieces and straighten it out, straighten it out, that's it, and then once you're happy that it's all straightened, we're going to roll. So just take the edge of your towel and roll quite tightly. Roll your crochet up into the towel and then that will work as a press and it will help flatten and uniform the crochet as it dries. We can go and pop that outside in the sunshine or on top of a radiator if it's not sunny where you are and then that is how you can straighten out your crochet it's called wet blocking and it's quite a nice process to do and you can squeeze all the water out gently yeah, leave it to dry and then we'll have an unroll and see how it is. So I'm going to show you how to block smaller motifs as well. We did the, uh, the long scarf. So these are smaller. You could wrap them in the towel, lay them on the towel like we did the shawl. I'm going to show you another way. I'm going to place all the motifs in the nice warm water that's got the scented soap in it. It smells amazing. <laughs> We're just going to let them soak up some water. Before we do that, we're going to get our blocking board ready. You can buy a blocking board, but you can also make them with things you've possibly got around the home. So I've got these double pointed steel needles and a uh, children's play mat. My grandson likes playing hopscotch on the other side of this mat. 
So I keep one side clean for my crafts and one side is uh, good for jumping on. And then just place your needles into your soft foam, whatever you have around your house. You might be able to do it with some cardboard, just as long as you can stab the needles into the foam stuff and it holds quite firm, like so. so we're going to take our freshly wet crochet, give it a bit of a squeeze out, not too much because we want to be nice and gentle with it and then we're going to pop it down onto our stakes. One in each corner and then bring it down to the base and have a looky see whether that Looks square. And that looks pretty good. So we continue with all the other ones. This is all the same pattern that I've crocheted. It's going to go on a little bolero that I'm making. I've done a few shorts on YouTube already about it and updates, and I will do a full pattern once I've made the whole garment. Yeah, you just keep doing that. Squeeze a bit of the excess water out and pop on to your pointed needles and then pop this somewhere safe so nobody goes stabbing their eyes out on here or you could pop a little bit of clay dough on the ends to stop that from happening, a bit of old blue tack. And yeah, and that's how you block your square motifs. And I'll show you what they look like when they dry. So yeah, just leave it somewhere to dry and then come back. That's the before blocking. And we'll have a look what it looks like once it's been blocked. So another way of doing wet blocking is good when your motifs aren't the same size. So unlike the yellow ones we just did that are all the same size, these ones are different sizes but they could do with blocking. So get another piece of foam or cardboard and just lay your pieces out. Make sure they fit on the board. Yep, yeah, I've got enough board there. And then there's these lovely long pins that I've got. And I'm just going to start pinning them to the board and just stretching it a little bit, but not too much. And you just pin them all the way around, like so, whoops, <laughs> pin them all, and then we're going to spray them. So once you've pinned all of your granny squares to either a piece of cardboard or a piece of foam or a blocking board, you just take your water spray and Give them a good soak in. <laughs> it's like being back as a kid, playing water pistol fights. And then leave to dry. Right, let's have a unravel and see how our wet blocking has done in our towel overnight. I'm just going to unravel the towel. This is the uh, pink shawl that I've made. The shawl pattern is on Ophelia Talks YouTube channel. It's half of the uh, Pixie Bolero. 
Yeah, here's the lock in. So, do you remember we popped it in the cold, sorry, warm water, and then laid it out flat and rolled it up. And this is the finished item. Looks so much more defined, the stitches. It's got a nice drape to it now. And uh, yeah, well worth blocking this piece. So the next two bits of blocking that I did was the granny squares that were all different shapes. I pinned them to the board and then had good fun squirting them with water, like a water pistol, when they dried overnight. I'll take them off the board in a minute. And the other one was this makeshift blocking board that I made out of sponge squares and double pointed needles. I found that I needed to bring the blocks up a little bit so the air could circulate and dry quicker. But yeah, we'll take that apart and have a look at our motifs and see whether blocking has made them flatter. I'm just going to pop the pins out of the crochet granny squares and pop them back into my pin cushion. <laughs> this is a little patchwork pin cushion that I made myself, just out of hexagons. It's very handy. And these long pins are really good. You get them in any haberdashery store. Uh, I've got some of these in Make Do and Mend in Devises, which is a great little shop. And also uh, Ringwood Fabrics in Ringwood, <laughs> uh, which is another lovely little shop that sells uh, wool and haberdashery. So that's all our pins out. And then we'll just take away our rubber mat. You can see that our crochet granny squares are nice and flat now and uniform in size. The ones that are the same size. So yeah, blocking these ones was really worth it as well. And now for this one, let's uh, take it apart <laughs> and see what we got. So I'm just going to push them down again into the bottom, hold my motifs and pull the double pointed needles out of the sponge bed. So we can get back in my needle case. And there we have our crochet motifs and as you can see blocking overnight has made the uh, design show up more. So yeah I'd say that was a success. There's all our blocked pieces. The pink shawl, the yellow motifs and the purple and blue granny squares. They all look Lovely and flat, but not too flat. Not like we've ironed it. We did uh, wet blocking. So that's uh, wet blocking we've done on the crochet. We did it on several pieces of crochet, on the shawl, on the yellow motifs, and on the granny squares. And I think you can agree with me, it's well worth all the fun to do the blocking. And if you've uh, liked my videos today, it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free to do so. It really helps my channel and I really appreciate it. You can also uh, check me out on grannyannie.com. There's a free ebook for beginners on uh, beginner crochet. There's also some patterns there that I've created. And you can find out about my crochet course, my online crochet course, where you can join me to learn even more crochet. <laughs> Thanks for watching.